Hey, topping your life math and history, and we are going to take a look at simple machines, but we're going to look at mechanical questions. So what we're going to be doing is try to solve an equation, but also try to do a word problem. In the last video, we have been taking a look on machines. So a machine is a device that is used to multiply the power needed to perform the same amount of work with less effort needed. The machine or machines are supposed to alleviate the amount of effort needed to complete a task. And the word problem is right over here. If a robot needs to push up a 3,500 newton crate up a 5 meter ramp and the height of the ramp is 0 0.5 meters high, what is the IMA of the ramp? If the robot exerts 450 newtons of force to drag the crate up the ramp, what is the AMA and the EFF? Hang on, what is an IMA? What is an AME? AMA? And what is an EFF? Well, when we talk about some kind of machine that is working, or when machines do some kind of work, there is one thing that is supposed to happen to complete that work. What's supposed to happen is right over here. So we have the force M, then we have the change in D. So the force that's put in, and the change of the distances in, is equal to the force that's outputted to the change of the distance output. Just like a function in mathematics, what you put in, you put out. Or just like your soccer or football coach says, the work you put into it will result into the work you put out of it. What, whatever you put inside, the result comes out. How much effort the robot or how much effort the machine does, an outcome will be successful or the outcome will fail, which we don't want it to fail. So when the word problem talks about the IMA, when it said, what is the IMA of the ramp? Here is what the ideal definition of what the IMA is. And literally, it does say ideal mechanical advantage. So the IMA, or ideal mechanical advantage, represents how much effort a machine is doing to perform work, to complete a task. But this would happen in a frictionless world. If you have a machine, like a robot or a forklift, that's trying to push something up, then without friction, how much effort would it exert? And number two, the IMA only focuses on the geometry and the engineering of what the machine is. When you change the inclined plane to make it steeper, steeper or a little bit less lenient, it's going to change the IMA because that's the structure of what it is. So let's start calculating on the IMA. So the formula for IMA is the distance in, divide that by the distance out. So when we come to the word problem, we have five meters up the ramp, and we have the ramp stand at 0 0.5 meters high. So what's that visualizing is if this is a ramp, it creates a right triangle, an inclined plane. Five meters is up here, and 0 0.5 is the height from here to there. So going from the distance in, divide that by the distance out. Here's what's going to happen. The IMA is going to equal the DI divided by the DO of D out. And that's going to be 5 meters, divide that by 0 0.5. And that is going to be 10. But we're not going to put any units for 10 because the IMA does not use units. It's a way to help us kind of visualize and understand if the machine was working in a frictionless world and according to its geometry and engineering, then it would be 10, which we can use that number to solve the problem later because we're not done yet. So when the problem said, if the robot exerts 450 newtons of force to drag the crate up the ramp, what's its AMA and EFF? But hang on, what is the AMA? 
We already saw the IMA, which is the conceptual part, which is the ideal plan, what our machine wants to do. If we want to try doing the AMA, this is what's going to happen. So the actual idea of what's supposed to happen is called the actual mechanical advantage, or AMA. So the actual mechanical advantage is just like the last one we learned about earlier in the video. But this one talks about if the machine was working in a world which is that has friction, which we're living in because of the Earth right now, then when you do the math with the forces, you would be able to get to a number, and that would represent how many times the machine the machine is using effort to complete a task. Remember, a machine is supposed to multiply the power needed to perform a task with the same amount of work, but with less effort needed. So if we needed to lift a heavy crate up a hill, or lift it up to a shelf, a machine like a forklift is able to do it for you with less effort. So the actual mechanical advantage calculates with the force of friction and the force of resistance. How many times does the machine give effort to complete a task than normally what you would do. So here's what we're gonna do. So with the AMA, the force is 450 newtons that the robot is dragging the crate up the incline plane. And the amount of newtons the crate has is 3,500 newtons. So the crate has 3,500 newtons. But the problem is, the forklift or the robot is pushing a force of 450. So here's what's going to happen. The AMA is going to equal the force out, divide that by the force in. The force out is going to be the amount of newtons in the crate. So F of out divided by F of in, or F of effort is 3,500 newtons divide that by 450 and that is going to bring us to 7.8. So the 7.8 is going to be accounted in terms of how many times the robot or machine is multiplying its power and it's multiplying its effort. When you have more effort there's less effort needed. Like, if you, A, want to climb up a mountain with a backpack, or B, use a pulley with a backpack. I would prefer B, because even though it uses less effort, it would multiply its power. So, 7.8 represents how much power is multiplied to effort the machine has. We're not done yet. We still have EFF, and when it comes to EFF, it's not the mechanical stuff. It's not AMA, it's not IMA. Instead, it represents the efficiency. So you probably heard about this word when it comes to engineering, or when it comes to like making things, or even how to solve like a math or physics problem. So efficiency talks about if you have this much work, is there a way or a definition or a solution to make that work a little bit easier to do? When you're efficient, that means you can do things a lot faster, a lot more better, and a lot more productive, which helps the economy outside this house grow into a superpower, like China, the USA, England, France, Germany. They're all superpowers because they found a way to make their economies efficient. So when it comes to efficiency with a machine, there's, there should be a way to make the machine not work or not put in more effort. The machine would work better if it had less effort put to, to, to do the same work to complete the task. You don't want a black smoking machine struggling. You want a nice healthy one that can do the work and is reliable for you. So the efficiency is the 
actual mechanical advantage, divide that by the idea mechanical advantage, multiply by 100. So if we do the math over here, wait, we have the math right here. So we have the AMA divided by the IMA. So the EFF equals AMA, divide that by the IMA. And that is going to be equal to 7.8 divided by 100. Then we have to multiply. No, no, no. 7.8 divided that by 10. Multiply by 100. And that is going to bring us to 78%. So the robot pushing the crate up the inclined plane that has a mass or that has 3,500 3, newtons, the efficiency of what's being done is 78%. But hang on, if a machine is less than 100%, why can't it be 100%? Well, since we're in a world full of friction and the law of conservation saying that you can't make or destroy energy, you can only use it and transfer it. When a machine does work or effort, could perform work, then that is using energy, which means you will never ever get a machine that's 100% more efficient, which is very, very impossible. It kind of breaks the laws of physics if we actually built one. So that completes the video. So we've learned about the what's supposed to happen when we're working with machines, what the idea of mechanical energy idea mechanical advantage is, what the actual mechanical advantage is, and last but not least, the efficiency. I hope this video has helped you understand simple machines, but we did a word problem and mechanical equations. Thank you for watching Helping Your Life's Math Industry. Like and subscribe.